I, I, I like to play the best. I mean, me and Johnny, we both know how each other plays, so I think uh, it's going to help us both. Uh, when I played that lady yesterday, she she was, I mean, she was unbelievable. She she just, I don't know, she just bluffed me out of every hand and did every, everything it took. So. And it's tough for you when you don't know how somebody plays, right? Because you don't know what you're up against. That's exactly right. At least I know I'm up against one of the best players, so I kind of, uh, I'm going to try to figure out a way to beat him. And what were you saying off camera right then? What were you calling him? A bloodsucker. Why? <laughs> Why? Because he won everything. He won all the money. He, he, he won every tournament, which I don't blame him. I mean, I, I, I like that attitude and what kind of determination. Well, are you going to win today? Are you going to beat him? Because, you know, you did tell me you wanted to play Phil. It's like two of the best playing in the world. Well, Phil just won the WP Determined in Commerce. Outlast almost 700 players. I mean, he's a little tired, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> you want his money, don't you? <laughs> Uh, uh, well, it's everybody's money. I'll put it this way. No, he, uh, he loves my money. He right. loves winning mine more than anybody else's. Well, I think you guys need to sit at the table and duke it out. Good luck, yeah. guys. All right, All right, thanks. Well, stick around because coming up, it's a matchup of poker royalty. One of the most feared players in the game, Phil Ivey, draws the legendary Johnny Chan. Welcome back to the National Heads Up Poker Championship presented by Vonage. We take you inside the Caesars Palace Tournament Poker Room for the matchup everyone's talking about, Phil Ivey and Johnny Chan. You cannot say enough about both of these two players' accomplishments. Phil, in many ways, the new school Johnny Chan, given that he's accomplished as much as he has in his young career. Well, look at these hands. Pocket fives for Johnny, aces for Phil. Yeah, a couple of pocket pairs. Pretty likely we'll see a flop here. Phil raises to 4,800. Not going to slow play aces. A lot of times in heads up play, we do see players too afraid to lose their man, not put in the re raise. Johnny calls. And the flop left to right, 9 7 king. Three over cards and a flush draw out there. Not Johnny's favorite flop. Phil bets 6,000. These were among the pre-tournament favorites to win the entire event. Chan, Ivy, and Chris Ferguson. And as good as they both are, Matt, Ivy has never made it to this round, and Johnny has never made it out of this round. As we see him wisely lay it down, he's been there before, and he knows when he's beat. Play continues in the round of 32 in the clubs and spades bracket. And forgive us as we indulge in the overused sports cliche. It has the feel of a heavyweight boxing match here inside of Caesars Poker Room with two of the greats in the industry, Phil Ivey and Johnny Chan. Yeah, this is the kind of matchup, Matt, you'd expect to see in the finals. Johnny Chan always says he wants to play the best. Well, he got his wish today in the form of one Phil Ivey, who's on a real hot streak. Phil's the kind of player that likes to make a lot of small probing bets on the flop, which means Johnny is going to have to pick off a bluff or two and make some really good reads in order to advance to the next round. I think he can do it. Well, we continue at the featured table, courtesy the Vonage pocket cam. 8-7 for Johnny. And he will call the 300. It's suited 9-4 for Phil, who checks. And the flop. No diamonds, but a pair of fours for Ivy. Making a pair not the easiest thing in the world to do. And knowing that, it looks like Ivy's going to bet the minimum 600. Johnny raises it to 1,800. Johnny knows that Phil likes to make those small probing bets. So rather than just call with the gut shot straight draw, he's going to try to take the pot down right now in case Phil has air. Oh, nothing small and probing about this. To 5,800 now on the re-raise from Ivy. Four grand for Johnny to call. He makes the call. Now, Johnny didn't have to make that call there, but he does it because he doesn't want Phil to think that he can make this play against him later on in the match, I'd say. And what a great call because the turn brings a pair of eights for Johnny. Phil checks. And he looked very disinterested there, like he was unhappy about the fact that Johnny had made the call. And be assured that Johnny has picked up on that. Johnny bets out 10,000. Big bet here from him. 
And Phil lays it down. So the two poker deities off to a fast start. We head back over to the Yang lock matchup now. You having fun, Phil? The process of playing almost nearly in all strategy games, whether I understand them, as long as I get the rules and I'm learning something or, or enjoying what I've already learned, I'm always enjoying. Like kids, my friends, kids' video games, when I start playing them, like I just start enjoying it. I love games. I feel like we're missing quite a few verbs or nouns or something there. <laughs> Ace 10 for Phil, he calls. Phil's chip lead up to almost 3 to 1 over Jerry. <clears throat> Suited Jack Deuce for Jerry, who checks. Now, lock limp with this ace, knowing that he's up against an aggressive opponent. He wants to let him make mistakes. Trips for Jerry Yang as the flop comes deuce, deuce, tray. Check, check. Another deuce on the turn. Four deuces for Jerry Yang. If you like slow playing trips, then you'll love slow playing quads as Jerry checks again. Lock bets 1,000. And why not? He's got ace high, doesn't want to give Jerry a chance to spike one of his hole cards and make a full house against him. Looks like a pretty safe board. And Yang lying in wait puts in a raise, another thousand to lock. This is one of those situations as a player that you hate. It's only 1,000 more. The minimum raise, Phil's gonna look him up here. And now Jerry makes a bet of 5,000. To which Phil quickly calls, and Yang takes down the pot with his quads. Oh, you could have got it all. That's so sick. You could have got, you could have got it all in. Well, so far the deck has treated Jerry Yang rather well in the 2008 Heads Up Championship, particularly in this memorable hand from his first round match with Chris Moneymaker. You got me, you got me, brother. I'm all in. All right, I call. Oh wow, nice hand. That four on the river sent Moneymaker home after the first round for the third consecutive year and put Jerry Yang into the round of 32. That was sort of like the type of thing that Chris did to people over and over again on the way to his bracelet. Maybe it's karma. Nine tray for Jerry here. Line still at three and 600. Yang calls and ace 10 again for Locke. 2600. He raises to 2600. Not going to slow play a pre-flop twice in a row. Perhaps a bit bitter from running into quads. Cool. Yang calls. Well, he's got to play out the one-hand rush with the old 9-3 off, right? <laughs> oh, and a little better flop for the ace-10 here. Aces and tens for Philly checks. Yang flopped a pair. The turn is an eight of spades. Two spades and three to a straight on the board now. Phil's not going to check it twice. Lock bet 1,600. And Jerry with the pair of nines calls. Yeah, he's got a really weak kicker with those nines, but after Phil gave up control on the flop, he thinks his nines might be good. Deuce on the river. Phil bets 4,200 now. Classic suction bet by him. Only half the pot. And that deuce unlikely to have helped anyone's hand. And Yang is sucked into the suction bet. Phil Locke takes down a nice pot. Well, Jerry's momentum takes a bit of a hit. Calling with middle pair means Phil gets paid. More from the Las Vegas Strip right after this. History, Caesars Palace has distinguished itself as the premier spot for entertainment in Las Vegas. When you're at Caesars, visit the forum shops to experience some of the world's best shopping. Next, set your sights on taking in an unforgettable show. Bette Midler and Elton John make their home at Caesars, and coming soon, Cher will join them. Before or after the show, enjoy fine dining at one of Caesars' top-notch restaurants, including Rayo's, Payard, and the award-winning Bradley Ogden. Afterward, head over to the Shadow Bar or the world-famous Pure Nightclub and dance the night away. So next time you're in the entertainment capital of the world, be sure to stop by the gold standard in resorts and casinos, Caesars Palace. All right, back inside the tournament poker room where Phil Ivey and Johnny Chan continue to fight it out. Chan has the slight edge now, but the match is still in the early rounds. Queen Jack for Johnny. 